everyone, I'm Mia Magic. Welcome back to Your Most Magical Life and our Manifest Your Magic series. This is my dear sister, who I'm sure you all know. Sahara Rose. And today we are chatting about how to manifest absolutely anything. So both of us have various techniques that we're super excited to share with you. And really the purpose of this video is for you to see that every single manifestation is gonna have its own unique techniques, its own unique little things to be looking out for. Some of them require more specificity. Some of them require more openness. So we're super excited to also share our personal experiences of incredible things we have manifested. Manifest. So you <laughs> can manifest your best life. So Mia, do you wanna get started with one of the most incredible things you've manifested and how you did it. Yeah. So this house and homes in general have been a really great way, not only that I have manifested the house themselves, but then using the house to manifest what I want. So building altars and using colors and like, I love all the greens and golds and color coding my bookshelves and really utilizing Feng Shui, which is this ancient Chinese practice that the emperors and the empresses would use in order to create more wealth and be able to rule their kingdoms and queendoms as best they could. And I've had so much success with Feng Shui. It was crazy. The first time that I really intentionally utilized it, I had a consultant come over. She like read her compass and did the whole thing with my house. And she was like, okay, put this in this corner and do this in this corner and do this over here. Put this kind of art, this color here, get a circular couch, la 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 la. And literally that year, my intentions had been to find a partner and to make more money. And I like 10 x my income and met my partner one month after I moved into the home and was even still just in the process of doing all the things that she had said. So Feng Shui and home decor and color magic is one of my greatest tips and practices and tools that I use to manifest anything in my life. And you can do it with even a small corner if you don't have a whole home, you just got a little room to work with, it's your bedroom, you got roommates, one, you should talk to your roommates and like make something dope together, but you can also just use the corners of your room and amplify and enhance the energy of them in whatever way represents the thing to you that you desire to manifest. Mm, I love that so much, especially because we're spending so much more time in our homes than ever before. Yeah. And it really is the energy that you're sitting in, right? Like we feel so different when we're in a different coffee shop or outdoors, et cetera. So really making your home your sanctuary mm -hmm. where you are recharging, where you're surrounded by things that inspire you. And of course, where energy can flow and yeah. move. And that's really what feng shui is about. So I love that tip. I definitely need to get my compass and, yeah, and get right? that shit on and popping. Yeah, I just <laughs> made a video on my channel about feng shui specifically. So that's there if y'all want to check that out. Uh, amazing. Okay. So I want to share a, a really groundbreaking tip that no one talks about in manifestation. Yes. And we're going to be sharing with you today because we on that good, good. Mm -hmm. And that tip to is Sahara that to give you the extra good secrets. Yeah. <laughs> and that tip is that we don't all manifest in the same way. Mm -hmm. And actually, according to our human design, if you're not familiar with what human design is, it's an astrological based system that really tells you where your energy flows, what you're good at, who you are. It has these different energy archetypes. And in it, there are these four arrows around your chart. So if you look up your human design chart online, jovianarchive.com, <laughs> I just did hers. I'm like, I, w I wonder what you are. The bottom right arrow is going to tell you what type of manifester you are. So there are two types of manifestors, specific and non-specific. So this shift actually has happened in the past couple decades that people are more shifting into becoming non-specific manifestors. This is actually going to be the type of manifesting of the new paradigm. Now, a specific manifestor is more like what you've heard about online. I'm sure you've seen other YouTube videos. It's like, be extremely clear about what you want, make a vision board, that is the thing, and if it's not that, it's a test from the universe and do not fall for it because you need Never to be settle. clear on your goal. Never settle. So like that is the way we've, you know, law of attraction books, et cetera. They yeah. really talk about it like that. Now what it's helpful for, especially if you're a specific manifester is it lets you get really clear on what it is that you want. So people who are specific manifestors. They may need that, that vision board, that very, very clear list because it allows them to get their juices flowing. It lets them get really excited about something because it's not so intangible, but it's very tangible. However, even if you are a specific manifestation, I know in my experience and I know with yours too, 
It is important to also still remain open because let's say I'm in my first year of business ever and I'm like, I'm manifesting $200,000 this year. And it's like, okay, well, it's your first year of business, you know? I'm not settling for anything less. That's just not how it works. So it does still require being open, being patient, being in that ping pong game with the universe that you're seeing what shows up. But if you are a specific manifester, you want to be clear. Now, how do you know if you're a specific manifester? Your arrow on the bottom right is gonna be facing towards the left. So if your arrow is facing towards the left, that means you are a specific manifester. Now, if your arrow is facing towards the right, which is mine and Mia's as well, we are non-specific manifestors and more and more of us are actually being born right now. So if you're a non-specific manifester, you may want to do the vision board and we're going to share a technique Mia used of creating a, a movie for yourself. However, it's very important to remain extra open and more so focus on what do you desire to experience? What is the essence of this? What is it behind the house or behind the partner? How do you feel when you're with them? And remain open to what shows up. And in fact, the universe may have bigger things in store for you than you actually may imagine. So let's say I'm manifesting this like really specific, you know, condo that looks like this, but the universe is surprising me with like a house on a mountain, but I'm so set on this manifestation that I miss this bigger thing that's in store for me. So if you are non-specific, it may be better practice for you to just say, universe, show me the way, yeah. guide me to my highest calling. Like I am listening, I'm noticing the signs, which we'll be talking about. And then letting that be the thing that guides you towards your manifestation. Because the truth is, it's like, how do we know? Like, how do we actually know what's best for us? I know things I've manifested in the past, I'm so happy they did not work out for me because they were not in my highest intention, but I can only see that now. So take a look at your human design chart. See if you are a non-specific or specific manifester. Again, specific manifestors, their arrow is facing towards the left, non-specific towards the right, and incorporate that into your manifesting practice. Yeah, I think it's so important, be, uh, the example that you used about, I wanna make $200,000, and if you don't do that, if you make a hundred thousand dollars and you're like, Oh, I didn't do it, but you don't appreciate you're, you're not grateful for the hundred thousand dollars that you did make. That's a much clearer sign to the universe than that. You're not settling. That's like, Oh, I, I'm not grateful for the blessings that you're bestowing on me. I'm not willing to keep trying or to just really be in the energy of wow, I, I did something. I achieved something. I made this happen in the first year of my business. That's amazing. And to celebrate, that's a really big piece. One that uh, I didn't think to talk about, but that a lot of our friends and, and teachers who we're going to have dinner with tonight, Layla Martin, she's, she's one of my dearest friends and teachers, and she always uses celebration. It's like celebrating your wins, celebrating the things that did go right. And that is such a great way to communicate with the universe. And in terms of what Sahara was saying with like the white picket fence and all of the things with exactly the kind of house and the condo that you want. I would never have lived in this home because it wasn't specifically what I wanted except when I walked in, all of these panels that you're seeing around us are old growth redwood trees and I come from the redwoods. And it was like having my ancestors and my greatest teachers, I've learned more from those trees than any human being on the planet and they're all around me. And it's a little, it's an old cabin. I was like, I don't know if this is right. But that sign was what made me know, oh, this is the place for me. This is where I'm meant to be. This is where I will be taken care of and where the next phase of my manifestations and my personal evolution will be you know, catapulted from is this beautiful, solid foundation. And also that that red rooted energy, it is, it's the root chakra. It's the essence of our, of our home and our safety and stability. And so that was such a powerful sign for me. And if I hadn't listened to it, I wouldn't have all of the amazing things that I've utilized this house to manifest as well. I love that so much just to be open, to be in conversation with yeah. the universe and not to get stuck on any one thing. So another tip that I have that I'll share is also to be open to angels and guides mm. along your way because this there so are <laughs> angels walking yeah. around us, but often angels will actually dress themselves up in a human costume that is not so desirable. So I'll share a story that really probably my biggest manifestation, which was 
walking up to Deepak Chopra at a conference and later him writing the foreword of my first book and then two more books after that. And for me, Deepak Chopra was like the pinnacle of like everything that I wanted to be. Like when I would be fighting with my parents and they're like, you're out of your mind. You're never going to be an author. Like, what are you on? I'm like, <laughs> one day I will be like Deepak Chopra, but feminine. And, and for my generation, he was the representation of what was possible for me. So one day I was in New York and I went to this yoga and science conference where Deepak Chopra wasn't even a speaker and he ended up coming on stage and he was the sponsor of the event, which I had no idea. He quickly said hello to the crowd and he walked off. And I knew in that moment that that's probably the only chance in my lifetime to walk up to him. And I just wanted to say hello and just to give my gratitude for what an influence he was in my life. So I literally walked through a crowd of a thousand people onto the stage and I walked right up to him and I shared with him what an influence he was on my life. And I shared with him my book, Idiot's Guide to Ayurveda, that I had just finished writing and it was about to be published a week later. So he gave me his email address and I sent him an email and I walked away just with so much gratitude for that experience. Like we were talking about if that was it and that was my only experience with him for the rest of my life, I would still be so grateful. And I was walking like two days later on the streets of New York and I was really busy and I was late. I was eating while walking and um, I was halfway across the street and I hear this man on the sidewalk saying, can someone help me cross the street? And I'm already halfway across the street, running late eating, but something in my head said, Sahara, if you're a good person, <laughs> you go and help that man cross the street. <laughs> So I turned around and I walked up to him. I'm like, hey, I'll help you cross the street. Where do you need to go? This man was visibly very homeless. And, you know, he, he was someone that probably a lot of people would be afraid of looking at. He had a lot of warts on his face. He had a very strong odor to him. And he linked on my arm and he said, oh, I'm actually going down to the subway two, two blocks down. Can you take me there? I'm like, sure. So we're on this walk going down. I'm like, so tell me about your life. And we start talking and turns out that he was a refugee from Iraq. My family's from Iran. So we were speaking about that and he was telling about his sons and his family. And it was a beautiful encounter. Mm. So I put him into the subway and right before the door is about to close of the elevator, I'm like, sir, by the way, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to university. I'm a professor of physics. And I was like, oh, Wow, like in my head, I, I would have never guessed that. And I just walked away with this like, mm, I love New York. Like you get to meet so many cool people like this, like such a humans of New York experience. And just again, feeling that gratitude and that connection in my heart. And that moment I had an email from Deepak Chopra, but literally the minute I let go of that man's arm mm. saying, what's your number? I want to call you. I was, I'm like, am I in trouble? Like, what is happening? Like, why does he want to call me? And so I emailed him back and we hopped on a call right away. And he invited me to his next conference where we had a meeting. And then he ended up offering to write the forward of that book. Mm. And I share this with you because that man, that homeless Iraqi refugee, he was not just a human, but he was an angel. I actually believe that he was an angel that took human form to see. Would I revere someone who had nothing to give me, who was not on a pedestal, who was not a famous author like Deepak Chopra, but also a doctor of physics. Would I honor that person as much as I would someone who to me felt like the pinnacle of success? But really those, those examples that we are looking for, they're all around us and the angels are all around us. So I share this with you because we are surrounded by angels every single day. And I've spoken to many friends who angels actually have appeared to them in the form of homeless people. Mm -hmm. So always remain open to who's showing up, who's asking you for help. Sometimes we get so lost in the Western world of like, I want to manifest this. How do I get, how do I take, how do I climb? But we don't look at who can I help? Who can mm -hmm. I support? So be looking at who, maybe it's my cousin who could really use help right now. Or maybe it's the local high school that could use a volunteer here. Or maybe it's this person again, who's like asking me for support and I'm so busy. Maybe it's just opening up your heart and listening to them at that moment. You never know when it's an angel in human form, or it's just an experience for you to really embody that thing that you are manifesting. You know, we, we expect people to help us, but how are we reaching out and supporting and lifting those up? So be open to angels and always be in support of those around you. <laughs> She's like, got me a little teary. You're so sweet. Girl. <laughs> Oh, that's such a good one. Yeah, I love that story. My partner has had a very similar angelic homeless person experience. Wow. Like very obviously not 
of human being and deep, long engagement on a, on a late night in Cleveland, Ohio. So one of the amazing things that I highly recommend that you don't have to go to the advanced Dr. Joe Dispenza retreat for, but you know, you could, it really works. Oh my goddess. But one of the practices that he encourages us to do and that we did throughout the retreat that was so profoundly impactful for me was utilizing this thing called a mind movie. So he does put a giant projector up and you watch it and fully hypnotize yourself with this kaleidoscope. So that's effective. And it's like also like four o'clock in the morning. It's like a whole thing. So your pineal gland is open. It's a process. However, the mind movie itself was so impactful for me. It was absolutely mind blowing. So what I did that was different, what they recommended was like, oh, use a picture and one affirmation of something you want to call into your life, something you want to manifest and, you know, use about eight pictures and that's your mind movie, play it along with a song that you really enjoy that, that represents the, these manifestations to you and call it a day. I was like, please, if I'm going to be casting this spell on myself and using a giant hypnotic kaleidoscope on myself, I'm going to do this right. So what I did was I went and made a full visual vision board for every single slide of my mind movie. So I used lots of different apps it's like Pinterest and Canva and all of my video editing software and did this whole thing where each slide. So what would have been one individual picture was basically a collage or a vision board itself about what I was calling into my life. So the big thing that I was doing was I was heading into Europe to film my amazing, Sarah was so supportive, my amazing YouTube series, Making Modern Magic. It was all about like being on this adventure, going back to my ancestral homelands, like a magical travel doc series, which is really deeply my greatest, highest dream and wish to do, like be the magical female Anthony Bourdain. I mean, come on, like I'd be so good at that. So that's what I'm still manifesting y'all. Just so you know, I'm going to like amp it out with all of you right now. But what I did was one for partnership. And I did all these pictures of happy couples and couples on the tops of mountains doing amazing things together and how different things about also what represented the kind of love I wanted to have. So there were like pieces of tantric art where, you know, their hearts were exploding, like the piece of art we've got up there, all kinds of different things. And I put all of this on my partnership board. And then I wrote a spell. It wasn't just an affirmation. It was a four lines. So two lines that rhyme and then another two lines that rhyme with each other. So it was a four line spell. And that was my affirmation on every single slide. Each one was a full collage and represented the entirety of what it meant for me to have this thing. And then I used that song from Wrinkle in Time called Magic by Sia. It's amazing. It's about having magic in your everyday life, that magic is in every moment. And literally programmed this entire movie into myself over and over again and watched that movie with that song. Honestly, I, I watched it so often, of course, during the retreat and afterwards. And I did happen to fly straight from Australia to Europe to film the thing. But when I was there and as I was filming and even afterwards during the editing process and creating it all, I was like, oh my goddess, I literally manifested everything in my mind movie. And I ended up meeting my partner later that year. Like I got the house, I got my dream car, I got my partner, everything. I'd had the exact car that I had on the vision board. Everything that I put on that vision board was coming true and, and is continuing to come true. And it was so profoundly powerful that I highly recommend anyone doing that. You can do it with super simple software and websites, Canva, Pinterest, iMovie on, on any computer, very, very simple and really effective. And then just choose a song that is positively programming you is, is really intentional with its words and with how it makes you feel and dance around to it, watch it. And as you're watching it, the other big piece is what do all of those things make you feel? How do you want to experience them? And those are some of my absolute best and most favorite ways to really attract anything into your life and make your dreams become your reality. 
That sounds so much fun. I really want to make a movie like that. Yeah. I just thought it's a fun movie night to get together with your friends and show each other your manifestation movies. Oh like, my God. how amazing is that? Just to like also let yourself in that vulnerability of sharing, yeah. you know? And it's just like grounding into, yes, I do want that. So these were such amazing tips. Share with us what you are yeah. manifesting in the comments below. We're so excited to see. We're so excited to support. Be sure to like this video and subscribe because we have so many more coming. If you have any topics you'd like us to dive into, we are here to support you. We're and so I'll grateful. literally fly to Miami just to make more videos uh, with her. We miss her. It's, I think, yeah, that's a great idea. I like that. Also, like, share your manifestations with yes. your friends mm -hmm. because Sahara is one of the best at calling us all together and creating intentional space and ritual together. And so that's a really good idea. I'm like, now we're going to have a mind movie party yes. like that. What and are you, you are all of our friends. So share with us in the comments below. And maybe we should just like have an in-person get together in the Redwoods and like share all of our mind movies. What do you think? Yeah. Are you down? Let us know. Bless you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Share this video, like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Mia. This is Sahara. Thank you for manifesting your magic with us and welcome to your most magical life.